Hello and welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, welcome for the first time. I have a little bit of holiday cheer. I have my Beethoven sonatas and I'm ready to do some practicing tonight. I'm Dr. Kate Boyd. I'm professor of piano and a pianist at Butler University in Indianapolis. And this month I'm practicing my way through the 10 sonatas that Beethoven wrote for violin and piano. This is in preparation for some upcoming performances in January with the wonderful New Zealand violinist Justine Cormack. This is how the sixth sonata begins. This is the opening movement. It's a very beautiful, somewhat peaceful sonata. It's more calm than the other sonatas that we've explored so far. I consider the character to be somewhat amiable, very good natured and easygoing. I'm gonna share with you three spots that I've chosen that are things that I've been practicing so that you can have some takeaways to use in your own practice. The first sp spot I'm gonna talk about is in measure 34. It's this melody. And it has then a whole series of arpeggios and that is somewhat tricky. I'm gonna play it for you slowly. what we're dealing with. The harmonies are E major and then F sharp minor, B major, and E. So this is all waves that kind of go up and down the keyboard. and it interrupts and it does something kind of dramatic. There's a lot of this kind of material in these 10 sonatas and in Beethoven piano writing in general. It kind of, it kind of creates a, 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 an angular flowing kind of feel to the arpeggio. Arpeggios like this are tricky. These are tricky to execute well because the intervals keep changing. We have a third and then a sixth and then a fourth and then a sixth and then a third and then a fifth. All the intervals keep changing and plus there's a difference between black keys and white keys and so and every chord feels different under the hand. That's the reason that I find it hard to play something like this effectively. You need to find the balance between using a lot of rotation, which would look like this. You can see I'm doing a lot of excess rotation and using the fingers. This is isolating the fingers, that's what that looks. Now what I wanna do is have a little bit of rotation and still active fingers. need to be active is because they need to go right to where the where the next note is going I need to aim one way I'm gonna practice this is with high fingers really practicing feeling the fingers drop now I'm gonna do it all staccato I'm going to do it in rhythms. I'm going to do it very legato. I'm doing it in different ways. And the reason is because I want to become nimble in how I play it. I don't want to only have one way that I play it and then if I don't play it exactly that way then I have problems. And so I'm trying to play it a lot of different ways. I'm going to try it slowly. Really focusing on my fingers going exactly where they need to go. 
other thing I'm going to do it is is to play it in groups of two. Yeah, that's very helpful. If you can do a passage like this that fast, then it's much easier to break it up. Just make sure that you're using the fingering. So uh, I will do that for all, all of the arpeggios. There's your takeaway. Break it down, play it in groups, play it in a number of different ways so that there's not just one right way that it feels in your hand. That'll really help strengthen your feeling in a tricky passage like that. The second spot I want to look at is right after that actually. It's right where I stopped. This reminds me of Mozart Sonata, right? It's uh, um, similar. Here Beethoven is making a very distinct character contrast between two little ideas. We just had something very smooth, we had the waves of sound, and now he's interrupting that with something that sounds very rhythmic, it sounds very driving, and it sounds kind of anxious with all of this tw swirling around of these fast notes. So what, what needs to happen here is there needs to be a pretty clear character change at that moment. That's what I'm going to practice now. I'm going to practice the end of the arpeggios. Subito piano. And I have a little bit of a tricky thing at the end of that. Just like in yesterday's practice, we talked about isolating exactly what the problem is, and for me, it's beat three of measure 53. Getting in. And, and the reason is because Beethoven established a pattern, and then he broke the pattern, and that's what this looks like. I'm going steps, and then he skips, and then he does this switch, the sixth talking about intervals here. So if you're not familiar with the concept of intervals, we talk about intervals to measure the distance between two notes. And so these these divisions, the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, it's it's like measuring it in a unit like inches or centimeters. It's just that we call it intervals and we call them by the span by how far the notes are apart. If they're close together, it's a second. If it's farther apart, it's a third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Anyway, right there. It's because I have to go down to my thumb. I'm going one, two, three, and then I want to go back to two. I want to go, but instead I have to go, I have to skip back over the second finger. It's very helpful to identify what is tricky about a tricky spot. This is your second takeaway. When you have a spot in a longer passage that is causing you to trip up with your fingers, take the time to figure out why. Is it because the pattern was broken? Is it because you need to rotate or use wrist circles to get from one place to another? Is it because you need to jump and your hand needs to get there sooner? Figure out why, and that is a lot of your issue solved because then you can just fix what you need to do. Okay, anyway, what do I need to do? I talked about, I have to go from two to five, this hand position to that. Yeah, that's it. So I'm here. I kind of fixed that, now I'm going to put it into context. Etc. I am 
loving this piece. It's so pretty. And of course it's in my favorite key, A major. The last thing I want to talk about is in measure 110. And the reason is because he's got a whole bunch of thirds and double notes in the left hand. It's a whole imitative thing that we have a theme that goes. He does that in it's it it's just like Bach it's very imitative it's very contrapuntal it's like a Bach two-part invention we have the two hands operating very independently it's very tricky I'll do it slowly that's hard And the violin and the piano have it, imitation, imitation. This is where the double, double notes happen. This is operating on two levels simultaneously. On one level, we have the melodic motive in the left hand along with the other parts. It's the top. that's happening then it is also harmony it's harmonizing what we have it's doing both so what I want to do is I want to bring out the top now I'm going to practice this so that's more secure to practice I've done this before on some of my other videos during this month we're gonna play the top voice legato you got that right top voice is legato and I'm gonna play the bottom voice staccato you got it That is to help voice and bring out that voice, the top. And then that recedes back into the background because then it does become just harmony. takeaways today. We talked about playing a passage multiple different ways in order to create a kind of more robust way of playing it and make it more reliable. We also talked about identifying why something is causing you trouble when it causes you trouble in order to correct it. So in other words, really diagnosing a problem as accurately as possible. And then we talked about thirds and double notes and we talked about the importance of announcing them when it's melodic in, especially in the left hand and practicing them legato and stick on the top and staccato on the bottom. Now it's the time in my daily video where I give you an update on the day. Well, today was quite a day. We went to Nashville and we saw a wonderful singer songwriter named Sean McConnell play an intimate concert just for 30 people in a recording studio. It was an amazing experience. And I just want to say thank you to our wonderful friend, Eric, for giving us the tickets and inviting us to the event. It was unforgettable and we had such a good time. So thank you, Eric, for that. The small world story about that is that his kids take piano lessons from a former student of mine. So it kind of goes full circle. Thirds are really tricky to play and I have an exercise that I always recommend that students learn to practice their thirds. I made a tutorial video about that exercise and I'll put it right up there in the corner. Go ahead and click on that for help with playing your thirds. Thank you for practicing with me today. I'll see you tomorrow when I continue my journey through the Beethoven Violin Sonatas. See you then and happy practicing.